The path to the future is lit by the knowledge of the past. This is the story of a young man's dream. The story of incredible achievement by dedicated men who overcame enormous odds. This is the story of Toyota. The journey began with Sakichi Toyota. Sakichi's father was a local carpenter, while his mother wove clothing to supplement the family's income. When Sakichi was young, the Industrial Revolution was erupting in the West. To compete, Japan had to join the revolution or be left behind. When the Japanese government put out a call for inventors, no one answered faster than Sakichi. In his early 20s at the time, Sakichi immediately thought of how hard his mother worked as a weaver and knew right then that his first invention would involve improving the loom and in turn his family's lives. In 1891, at the age of 24, after countless hours of work, Sakichi was rewarded with his first patent for a wooden manually operated loom. This invention led to a profitable company and just three years later, after continuous improvements, Sakichi was ready to present his newest invention, Japan's first automatic loom. With success at hand, the recession soon hit Japan which resulted in Sakichi Toyota losing his factory, employees, and the rights to many of the machines he invented. As a result, he was forced to resign from his own company in 1910. Unsure of his future, Sakichi traveled to the United States. He was amazed at the industrial advances he saw, in particular, the automobile. Inspired by his travels, Sakichi returned to Japan and in 1918 formed a new company, Toyota Spinning and Weaving. This new company sold the cloth it manufactured. In 1929, Sakichi sold the rights to his fully automated loom for 1 million yen, which he offered to his son Kiichiro under one condition, that he use it all for research on the production of the automobile. Kiichiro took up the challenge and began his journey by traveling to America to visit the premier automotive manufacturers as his father had done years earlier. He returned to Japan in 1930 and began his work on the production of the automobile. On October 30th of that same year, Sakichi Toyota passed away. Grief-stricken, Kiichiro had made it his mission to fulfill his father's dream of building Japan's first automobile. By 1933, Toyota Automatic Loom Works had established an automobile department. By 1934, they had developed Japan's first prototype automobile engine, and by 1935, they accomplished the almost impossible. The creation of Toyota's first prototype automobile, the Model A1. Toyota was once again on the road to success. It was at this point that Toyota was changed to Toyota as we know it today. This change was undertaken because in Japanese, Toyota required only eight brush strokes to write, a number that is thought to bring luck and prosperity. The following year marked the birth of the Toyota Motor Corporation, which laid the groundwork for decades of industry leadership. Soon it became clear that another manufacturing plant was needed. The new plant was built in Koromo, Japan now known as Toyota City. But like any story of triumph, it is not without its downfalls. By the late 1940s, global events brought Toyota close to bankruptcy, and Kiichiro Toyota was forced to resign. Out of respect for him, many workers voluntarily resigned. However, with the Koromo factory operating at full capacity, Toyota was back on the road to profitability within a few years. Just as they were gaining momentum, in 1952, their leader and mentor, Kiichiro Toyota, passed away. Eiji Toyota, Kiichiro's cousin, along with Taichi Ono, were put in charge of manufacturing. Together, Eiji and Taichi examined every aspect of the plant. To improve productivity, they had made many changes, including arranging the machines in the order that they were used. This resulted in production flowing more smoothly and in increased productivity. By the 1950s, Toyota was the leading Japanese auto manufacturer. Looking for new horizons, Toyota set its sights on the global market. Leading the way was Shotaro Kamiya. 
In 1955, Shotaro had visited the United States where he noticed a growing number of small European import cars. Shotaro knew that the time was right to introduce Toyota to the U.S. market. The car Toyota would ship was the Toyopet Crown. Within a year, in 1958, the first North American dealership was opened in Hollywood, California. Disaster! Less than 300 cars were sold in the first year. Toyota quickly realized that the problem was the Toyota Pet Crown was built for the moderate speeds of Japanese roads, not the American highways. Toyota went back to the drawing board, this time with Shoichiro Toyota, Kiichiro's eldest son, overseeing the process. It was Shoichiro who implemented what would be known as Toyota's total quality control. Thus began the first stage of Toyota's transformation into a global company. By the 1950s, Toyota was exporting its vehicles to the United States, Brazil, Taiwan, Saudi Arabia, Australia, and Thailand. The company's export strategy was based on the principle of Genshi Genbutsu, go to the source to find the facts. Toyota did extensive research, the result of which was international success and acceptance. There's a new hot one on the American road, the Toyota Corona, and the editors of Motor Trend report Corona is miles ahead of competition in performance. The introduction of the Corona for the American market brought success that went beyond sales. In 1965, Toyota sold its first vehicle in Canada, and the Toyota Motor Company was awarded the Deming Application Prize for Total Quality Management. Hey, what's a Corolla? A new car! A new low-priced economy car! From Toyota! In 1966, Toyota introduced the Corolla, and the company was on the move. The oil crisis of the 1970s boosted demand for more fuel-efficient cars. This proved to be a windfall for Toyota. This, along with the resistance of many countries to the importing of foreign cars, allowed Toyota to begin assembling their vehicles overseas, making Toyota a truly global company. In 1984, Toyota opened its new United Motor Manufacturing Plant in the United States. The new plant used the Toyota Production System, or TPS, which was built on a philosophy of mutual respect and trust between management and employees and the empowerment of team members. Soon, Toyota began opening manufacturing plants worldwide, including the Quotesui Motors plant in Taiwan, Toyota Manufacturing Kentucky, and the Toyota Motor Manufacturing Canada plant located in Cambridge, Ontario. Over the years, the Toyota manufacturing plants at Cambridge and later Woodstock, Ontario have built a number of models, including the Corolla, RAV4, and RAV4 EV, plus products from Toyota's luxury division Lexus, like the Lexus RX. The Lexus RX is a vehicle that has come from a long line of Lexus models, starting with the Lexus LS, which was launched in 1989 after six years of research and development, and 450 prototypes and four and a half million kilometers of testing, a commitment to excellence that continues to this day. In 1993, Toyota launched the G21 project, now known as the Toyota Prius, the first mass-produced hybrid vehicle. The Prius brought on excitement in a whole new way, proving that being environmentally friendly doesn't have to compromise on quality or fun. Since that first hybrid, Toyota has sold over 10 million hybrids worldwide. In 2009, Akio Toyota, the grandson of Kiichiro Toyota, was announced as the new president of the Toyota Motor Corporation. He brought with him a spirit of innovation. An avid motorsports fan, Akio also instilled the spirit of Wakudoki into the company, which roughly translates into heart-pumping excitement. This led to a company-wide transformation to energize both the design and performance of all Toyota vehicles. Under Akio's direction, in 2012, Toyota took the Prius one step further and introduced the first Prius plug-in hybrid. The Prius Plug-in Hybrid, also known as the Prius PHV, combines hybrid technology with the benefits of extended electric vehicle EV driving. In 2014, Toyota celebrated its 50th year in Canada. 
Toyota and its dealers employ more than 23,000 people in Canada. And over the years, the company has invested more than $9 billion in Canada and has developed a relationship with 4.6 million Canadian customers. In 2015, Toyota introduced the Mirai, a first-of-its-kind hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. Along with its introduction, Toyota also released a compilation of its 5,000-plus fuel cell patents, which took over 20 years to develop and made them available to other automakers, energy providers and innovators royalty-free. This signaled the company's commitment to exploring new emissions-free technologies. It was also in 2015 that Toyota came out with the Toyota New Global Architecture, or TNGA. At its core, TNGA is about building ever better vehicles on common platforms with common parts. This also allowed the manufacturing plants to be more efficient and responsive to changes in the marketplace. In 2016, Toyota took a bold step towards improving safety for all its customers when it introduced Toyota Safety Sense, or TSS. Toyota Safety Sense ensured that most Toyota vehicles, regardless of price point, would be equipped with a broad suite of active safety features, a first in the industry. Inclusion is a big part of Toyota's vision of the future, as Toyota moves from a car company to a mobility company. This vision involves mobility for all, with constant innovation and improvements. Toyota seeks to develop new forms of transportation to be able to connect technology with people in new and exciting ways. The story of Toyota is a true inspiration. This journey began with a vision that took resolve, innovation and dedication by a brilliant team. A dream carried from generation to generation and now the world. For over 85 years, Toyota's innovations continue to make people's lives easier. But as far as we've come, there's still so much we can do. With our eyes to the future, we're setting our sights on an even greater mission, helping to give all of humankind the freedom to move. The values and work ethics that formed Toyota in the beginning are still present in those who lead the company today a vision that became a reality thanks to a young man who dared to dream the incredible. In the words of Sakichi Toyota, may your future be lit by the knowledge of the past.